So YouTube ads is just so confusing. Like you don't know where to start. All the settings is completely different with Facebook and that's exactly why I'm filming today's video. I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step in my actual ad account how you can go ahead and sort of create your whole YouTube ad campaign. I'll show you every single setting and I'll show you all the little tips and tricks and all the little settings that I do to get the best results. But yeah, let's jump right into my ad account. Before we get into this video, let's start by announcing last video's winners for $1,000 worth of courses or consultant course with me, the winners here. If you guys wanna qualify or if you just drop a comment below, follow me on Instagram, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, like this video, and I'll be picking the best comment every single video. So let's go ahead and click plus. We're gonna go ahead and create a new campaign. And what you wanna do is initially, I started with sales and leads, but in order to get the best results, you actually wanna create a campaign without a goal or guidance and that's sort of how I get the best results because it will allow you to tweak things along the way. So let's start with that. And then I usually do YouTube pre-roll ads, so I do video and then I pick a custom video campaign. Continue. Perfect, so here's a campaign. So the campaign name, I'll name it such as, I don't know, 001 testing campaign. Now for bidding strategy, there's a lot of options. Usually there is even a ton more. I like to just stick with maximum cost per view. Um, that sort of gets the best results for me. Then campaign and dates. Um, I like to do a daily budget, not a campaign total. That sort of gets much better results for me. And then what you're gonna do is you always wanna start with at least five to 10 pounds USD or Australian dollars, at least. You don't wanna do one, two or three. It needs to have at least five USD. So I'm gonna put in 10 Australian dollars. Networks, so this is big. When you do YouTube pre-roll ads, you wanna uncheck YouTube search results. You don't want your video to pop up when people search different keywords um, and it will sort of display as one of those videos that they see in their search results. You don't want your ad to appear there. You want it to appear as a pre-roll ad when people watch videos because that's sort of what you designed your ad to be, not a in-display ad where people just see randomly. And then for languages, I usually like to put in the language you speak. So if your ad is in English, put in English. These are the little things that I didn't do when I started. So you guys are getting all the tips and tricks. Location, um, I like to enter in location and put in the top five countries. So you can go advanced search and I'll put in United States, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, and then lastly Canada. So I'll put in the top five because you know, that's sort of best for testing and they sort of get the best results. Now, inventory type, I like to click expanded because that will sort of just give you more um, amount of sort of traffic. So I click expanded, excluded content. I don't exclude anything. And the reason why I don't exclude anything is because we're picking where our ads are gonna be placed. And if an ideal video, for example, if I wanna target all dropshipping videos, what if there's a dropshipping video that has a lot of high quality traffic, but for some reason it's been tagged with uh, conflict? Maybe it's sort of like a beef video, maybe there was a bit of swearing, and now as a result, I don't get access to that high quality traffic at a much cheaper price. So that's why I don't exclude anything. And this is definitely something I used to check. So lesson learned, you guys get to have the tips. For the excluded types and labels, you definitely want to exclude your videos of embedded videos and live streaming. And to explain the exact reason why is because embedded videos are on other people's websites. And when people go to a website to watch a certain video, they want to watch that video. So they're going to skip your ad straight away. Whereas when people are watching videos on YouTube, they have intent to sort of watch other things that are related to what they're trying to figure out. So that's why we exclude embedded videos. And when it comes to live streaming videos, when people are watching a live stream, they wanna watch what's happening. Like every time an ad pops up, that distracts them and stops them from the live content they're watching. So they will instantly skip to go back to that live content they're watching. And that's why your ads won't get much use on live streaming videos. And then a good tip is you wanna untick content not yet labeled. Because what if a video has been just created, um, it's 100% fit for your niche, all those early views 
are not being shown to you because the video has not been labeled yet. And when a video is not labeled yet, then you cannot have your ads on top of those videos. And usually the early views that go to those targeted videos, those early views are the most highest quality views because they're people that have the notification bell on. They have high intent, they click in that video straight away because it answers their question. And I want my ads shown especially to those people. Let's scroll up. There was one thing I wanted to mention under budget and dates, definitely do standard. You just get much better results. If you do accelerated, Google will just spend all your budget super fast and you don't get many results. Next is the additional settings. So conversions, keep as default, devices default, frequency capping. This is important. This is something that I didn't do at the beginning. And after I sort of did what I'm going to show you now, the results have been just much better. So what I like to do is I like to cap impression frequency. Like if someone watches your ad and they skip and they don't like it, you don't want to be showing your ad again and again and again to them in that one day. So I like to cap it to one impression per day. And then ad schedule, I do all day, ad group name. For the ad group name, I'll put in the name of the actual ad I'm using. So let's say I use um, funny ad walking in park. That'll be the name of the ad group. Demographics, you can narrow it down if you know specifically where your sort of demographic is, but usually I like to leave it open. Audience, this is sort of where you go ahead and do your interest targeting. When you go to browse, um, there is what they're actively researching and planning. This is sort of the interest targeting. There's keyword targeting, topics, and placement. I definitely always like to start with placements if I'm a beginner. And I'll put in all dropshipping related videos, all Amazon FBA related videos, all Facebook related videos into here and I'll just paste all those content into the placement. And then bidding. So this is also important. Like I usually don't know where to start. So the tip is you want to start at 10 cents. So the reason you do that is because the average sort of cost per view is roughly around three to six cents. And that's sort of where everyone's also bidding around. So in order to get your ad on top of everyone else, you wanna be bidding above everyone else by putting a bid of 10 cent so that you outbid everyone. And how the bidding works is that Google would prioritize all the people with the highest bid and then it'll sort of go down that sort of chain. So if everyone else is bidding three to six cent and you're bidding 10 cent, you're gonna get priority and everyone's gonna get shown your ad first. Now, if someone else is bidding at 15 cent, then they'll be paying 11 cent per bid and they'll get priority. So that's sort of how the bidding system works. But now let's go to the ad creation. So let me find an ad. So I'm gonna to go to my channel. I'm gonna select this video. Let's say I wanna run this video as a pre-roll ad. I'll select skippable in-stream ad and that's sort of the ad, it's the pre-roll ad. So you wanna select that. And then for your final URL, you wanna put in your website and in my dot org slash one on one. That's my one on one application, for example. And that's sort of the initial landing URL that all my audience will go to when they click on my ad. Now, the display URL. This is very important. So this is sort of the URL they'll see here or like here. And what I like to do is I like to make it more nicer. Um, if you have like a long URL, like such as one on one dash mentoring dash money, that's super long. And you definitely don't want to have a long URL like that shown. Like it's very off-putting basically. So what you want to do is you want to just shorten it, remove the end, remove the www dot. I like to just put in Andy my, and I like to capitalize it because you're sort of creating branding. See how andymy.org looks much more simple and clean and professional. That's what I like to do. But as you can see, this link is very, very tiny. If I preview the ad, as you can see, the ad, like people don't know where to click. It's this tiny, tiny URL that's so, so small. It's impossible for people to see, like how they know where to click. So what I like to do is I like to use a call to action. So it creates this massive, bigger button. So let's go test, test. You'll see how this button is much more visible you could put in a button such as test test and it's basically much more easier and now people would know where to go when they want to basically opt in and become a lead. So I definitely like to use a call to action. I like to use something such as join now, learn more, um, start now, stuff like that. You want to basically something that entices action. And then headline, you know, I like to do something like change, change 
now or make the change you need to watch something shorter but basically it's a pretty interesting clickbaity headline and then companion banner I leave that to auto generate and then put in the ad name I literally just copy the ad group name so it's something like um, funny video talking walking in the park and yeah that's the whole process I literally took you guys from A to Z how to go ahead and create your first YouTube ad campaign or the settings or the minute little details that have wasted me thousands and thousands of dollars and you guys get to know the secret straight away like I'm giving guys all the shortcuts all the things to avoid all the settings to pick all the settings to uncheck and that's gonna save you guys thousands so I hope you guys enjoyed this video all I ask is for a simple like and subscribe hit those buttons um, question of the day are you doing YouTube advertising drop your comments below I want to know your thoughts I want to hear if you're jumping into YouTube advertising because there's just so much potential YouTube is just untapped Everyone knows about Facebook advertising, but no one is using YouTube. And my goal on this channel is to reveal all the YouTube advertising secrets that the gurus aren't doing. But yeah, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with more value. Peace.